Today, I thought there no better guest than a person I've known for many years to have on board um, for our first video in this series is Len Ferguson, who is a, basically a broker extraordinaire that I've known for many years. Can you tell, um, obviously I know you pretty well, but can you tell the audience about your background and your expertise in franchising in particular around the topic we're talking about today, the current market for buyers and sellers of franchises? Yeah, I can do that. Well, um, my background is in franchising, of course. I've been selling franchises for nearly 20 years. Uh, co-founder of uh, the Fin Group, which is Fin Franchise Brokers, Fin Business Sales. So always been in and around selling businesses, franchises, and uh, and as a franchisor, because we franchised our business too, and and um, had it, you know, up to about 50 franchises. So yeah, sort of been on both sides of the fence, seeing buyers and sellers, you know, on both sides. And what are you up to now? Uh, well, I've sort of moving out of uh, the Fin Group and sort of working on my own. So sort of back working with some clients again. So I have a few clients that I work with helping them recruit franchisees uh, for their business. And I know that, you know, recruitment is not the, we sort of talk a bit about that and you, you and I have both got an opinion on the word recruitment. We'll probably, we'll probably touch on that, I dare say. But I, yeah, so working with a few clients, helping them grow their franchise networks. Okay, so it's, it's fair to say that really you've you, you sort of moved away from direct selling quite a bit from a brokerage perspective, and now you're sort of right back at the coal face, talking to buyers every single day and franchisors as well. Yeah, perfect way to put it. So yeah, I sort of, as, I guess what I was doing was franchise operational work, so operating and running a franchise network, um, working as the as the leader of a franchise network for quite a while there, and now that since I've moved into this role, I'm now working exactly doing that, talking to buyers, looking to buy businesses. Excellent. And that's exactly why I wanted to get you here today because now you're no better person, I think, in the country to talk about or answer this question. Is it a buyer's or seller's market? Well, it's a buyer's market at the moment. So it's, you know, it's probably a very, very strong buyer's market, one of the strongest I've seen it for a long time. So actually, I don't think I've ever seen it this strong. Yeah, why, why is that, do you think? What, what particular attributes make it such a strong buyer's market? Probably the perfect storm of all the things that have been happening in the market. You know, we've had the franchise inquiry, we've had the banking inquiry, all of these um, things that have happened. Uh, a lot of bad press about franchising, that also washes over into business. It just affects people's confidence in, in buying a business. There's still buyers out there wanting to buy a business, but they're just very, they're much more cautious now. So confidence is probably a little bit down. Mm, you can see that confidence all across the board, really. So um, as far as buyers, what they're up to, what, what, are, what are buyers telling you? What are they saying to you and the questions they're asking when you're talking to them about investing in a franchise? Um, well, they're, just, they're, they're obviously doing a lot, much more stringent due diligence. So they're asking for a lot more information than they've ever asked for before. So um, they're, also, they're also asking about why should I get involved in this franchise? And, and I guess that was always done previously by... Um, by their franchisor and, the, and the, their marketing materials. Well, well, the marketing materials, product, they just don't really cut it. They don't, no, that was exactly the phrase I was about to jump in. They just don't cut it. No, they don't um, cut it. And um, I think from what I've seen out there, and obviously as you know, that we're heavily involved with, um, from a content marketing and position and helping position franchise brands and giving information to buyers about yep. investing in a franchise. Um, the material hasn't really changed much in two or three years. And in those two or three years, we've had an enormous crisis of confidence yes. and trust in franchising as a business model. I reckon you could go back and say the content hasn't really changed for more than a decade. So from what I see, yep. they're still using old fashioned techniques to attract you know, a modern franchisee or potential franchisee. But franchisees or people that are buyers, they've never had this opportunity to gather this much information ever in their life before because they can now find out so much about any kind of business they want just by getting online and looking around. So I think if you're still using old fashioned techniques, like giving them a brochure or things like that, there's no personality in that. They, you've, got to, you know, you've got to show buyers, why would they choose you? I think the, the key word with buyers and attracting prospects and, and moving, you've really got to move them to be able to take some action, I think is inspiring people. That's actually and, a great way And to I say think um, we need to inspire people to actually want to get into business with us. And I think yeah. we're missing that point. Yeah. I think brands are missing that point where we keep talking about that we're the best at this, we give the best training, we've got a, a great training academy, we've got in-store support or whatever. It's, there's a disconnect. Well, I think what you just said then is really good because you've got to inspire them. But every franchisor out there that I know of says we've got the best training, we've got the best system, we've got the best. Well, we can't all be the best, right? So no. someone's got to be the best. So the best way to show someone is to actually show someone. And I think video content, well, obviously what we're doing today, that's a great way to show people what your business is about. Give it a personality. And, you know, in the end, buyers are really, they're going to ask, why would I join you? Why? You know, so you've got to inspire them 
to show them why. It's interesting, you know, we've, that you mentioned video content. As you know, we've been doing a lot of video content. We're really investing in that for franchise brands and for ourselves as well. And that's what this outstanding franchising series is very much so. But um, it's a hard sell, I've got to say, yeah. to franchisors to talk about video content. Um, I, I can't see a better way globally. Everyone's talking about Gary Vee's talking about it. Whoever you want to talk about it, who's getting um, a B two B marketplace or a business to business selling or whatever it is you've got, yeah. they're talking about using video storytelling as your primary method to get your message across, and then you put it out in the varying channels, whatever they may be. Yep. It is very hard still, and I'm seeing franchisors really sit on the fence around video content for their brands, mm. and, and I think that's part of the old-fashioned attitude that we've probably talked about. There's, they've got to now embrace the fact that this is how people, they, they engage with you now, right? So, so you think about um, if you send them, you know, a brochure, it's sort of one-dimensional, isn't it? Mm. It's sort of, you Very read much so. it, you know, with a video, you can actually create some emotion about mm. your brand. And, and I think I was talking to a franchisor the other day um, a prominent franchisor, and I said, you've, you've now got to, it's almost like you want to create reality TV because these shows, they get, you know, reality TV are some of the most popular We're trying, ones. we're trying, mate, tell you. Oh, we're it's, trying. it's the way to go forward <laughs> yeah. because that's how, it, um, that's how you get people to sort of really understand what business you got. Yeah, I think, um, um, I, and I talked to a number of brands about video marketing as well, and, and I'm thinking of the prospect, the person who's looking to invest, and some of you may be watching this, who's looking to invest in a franchise business, and no doubt franchisors are watching this as well. And the thing is, is franchisors say to me, if we do a five or six or seven minute video interviewing a person who's in a franchise business, oh, that's too long, no one will watch that. Mm. If someone is thinking of investing 50, 60, 70,000 even, or half a million dollars into something, they will watch a five minute video oh, of it. someone who's in that business. Well, I know that- Guarantee a, you they will. Well, there's a brand that I represent and they do a lot of video marketing. And I know when I get a really hot prospect, they said, I've watched all the videos. That's perfect. So, That's music to your ears, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. As soon as so I said the you, can, you can have an assumption of what they already know. You can yep. progress the conversation along. Yep. And you can not waste anyone's time because you're already a certain point of knowledge. 100%. And so if they've watched all your videos, you know that, yeah, they're a serious player in this, in this biz, for this business. Yeah. yeah. Sort of suits they've them. shown real intent. Real intent. Yep. Yeah. And they, and they also know a lot more about the business than I could ever explain to them or, via, or a brochure could explain to them. Mm. They've seen actual people that maybe franchisees provide testimonials. There's, there's yes. so much more things you can do. Yeah, you can really think, um, you can really think outside, the, um, outside the square yeah. as far as video content goes. And it gives you a lot more time because the people who get on a page where there's a bunch of videos will consume it if they're interested in that business. Yeah, it's true. So that's what we're trying to work on for sure. So if we've, um, I've almost forgotten where we got up to, mate. Um, so that was, what are sellers saying? What are people who are selling their individual franchise? What are they telling you? Um, it, you know, can I get the price I'm looking for right now? And, and I guess, how long is it going to take for me to sell my business? Um, they're the, age-old questions, but they're really prominent now because, um, you know, being in a buyer's market, it can sometimes be more difficult to get a sale. Um, I think sellers, have, they've definitely got to be prepared to negotiate to get a deal because um, values are probably off what they, were, what they may have paid for their business. So what they may have paid for their business it may not be achievable to, to get that price now. I always found I've sold real estate previously and I've also been um, in senior executive with franchisors and was selling franchises as well at the time. And the, the worst thing that always would hit me from sellers of businesses or even of houses would always see, well, you know, this is what it cost me. Yeah. It's totally irrelevant, isn't it, what it cost them, yeah. really? Or when it, when it comes to the buyer, when it comes to actually making a deal, yeah. like getting a deal done. Yeah. And unfortunately, I had a lady um, just approach me recently that her business is making a loss in a franchise network and, and said, look, I need to sell this business for 300000 Because it cost her. This is what it owes me. I owe the bank. I owe da 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 and unfortunately, when I had a look at the financials, the business is not going to get anywhere near that. Yeah. Um, so the realisation she'll need to come to is, does she stay and fight and, and run it through, um, which may not be the best option either, or does she cut her losses and sell? And unfortunately, a lot of sellers are sort of in that boat right now. And, and mm. I guess the, the tightness of money being available to buyers. Yeah, it's a very difficult time. Well, buyers yeah. have got to be good buyers now. And I, and I guess if you, you know, in the past, you, you buyers could get accreditation and be lent 50% against the business, the banks are very, you know, they, they might be a bit tight on that policy at, at the moment. So buyers are sniffing opportunity, obviously. Absolutely. It's probably never been a time, better time for a buyer. As a buyer right now, you, there's some bargains out there. And I know that, well, 
uh, everyone says it's the right time to buy. And I guess that's the thing we always talked about. But Especially every broker says it's the right time well, to buy. Well, every broker says it's the right time to buy, but mm. it's actually right, really true right now. No, it's really true right now. <laughs> so, Those previous 10 years you've told me, yeah. it was, no, it was, right yeah, no, right well, now. no, no, it's really the right time now. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Do I, do I believe you? That's the question. That's actually my next question. No, it's not. Yeah. Um, so what are the best franchisors doing? Um, building trust. I, I think the franchise industry has had a real beat up um, recently. Bad media. Um, a lot of franchisors being, you know, dragged through that. Uh, the franchise inquiry has certainly damaged the brand of franchising. Yep. Um, the, the whole business model of franchising has been under attack. Yeah, and it's under pressure too because mm. costs are right up now. They've, you know, it's never been more costly to run a business. Mm. And I guess what the best franchisors are doing, they sort of recognise that. So they're they're working on building trust. So um, and and the best way to do that is, you know, show buyers why they should choose them. Um, and you do that by being very transparent and sort of inviting them in to the business before they buy. I yeah. guess is the best that's way. That's where video comes in. You know, we keep oh, talking about. Yeah. Um, and we've we've done a few um, shoots recently in um, in headquarters and stuff. Stuff that you probably would never have shown before. Yeah. But now I think nothing's nothing's off the table. And brands who talk to me about video, they say, well, the question is, well, what would we create a video of? And I, we've well, I sort of start in my talking with brands is about. Um, okay, well, what gaps do you think, what questions are people asking you when they're thinking about investing in your franchise? What, what are those questions about? Therefore, you, what, that provides a gap in knowledge to that person yeah. that you can probably fill before they even get to that call with you. Well, buyers want to know what they're going to be doing in, in a business. So day in the life. A day in the life. Yep. So you do a day in the life video showing them what they're going to be doing. So they, like I was saying, you invite them into your business before they buy. And it's not a try before you buy, but it's certainly have a look before you buy. Um, and maybe if you own a business where you have a product, invite them in to try your product. Yeah. Um, really engage with them on an emotional level because that's how you connect and build trust. Um, sending the old brochure and doing the recruitment, as everyone knows right now, it doesn't work anymore. You've got to sell yeah. why you're the best. And we, I see all the comments that come through for every single inquiry for every brand into our website. I look at all the comments and people just don't ask that anymore. No. Pe the, the number one thing that people are actually asking mainly are um, two things, availability about yep. a particular location. Yeah. Is this particular spot available because it's near geographically near where they are? Yep. And number two, um, how much will I earn basically? Well, how much will I earn was always there, yeah. but I see it a lot more now. And, and a lot more now with the lower price franchises, do, do they provide me a guarantee? Yes. So, um, and as a franchisor, it's something that maybe you need to challenge, you know? So I, I think the days of selling franchises and, you know, just to grow mm. and um, it sort of can't be done anymore, mm. you know? So you can't just, put out sites and, and hope that they'll be successful. You sort of got to have a lot more knowledge about it. It's going to be successful. I think, I think people are also, when someone is um, uh, inquiring to a brand about being interested in investing in it, I think they're very much judging that brand on the response they get. I mean, Absolutely. we always did a little bit, but I think even more so now because there's so many, I mean, there's about a thousand franchisor options to choose from out there. Yeah. So if you get one that you're interested in and they don't get back to you or the communication's not very polished or anything, you think they're gone like that. Well, it's, we're in a give it to me now society, really. Like it's because everything is available so quickly, they're expecting the same kind of response. And mm. we used to sort of say, oh, we get back in 48 hours. Well, really now it's got to be 24 hours yeah, and, that's and not sometimes good less. Now. I've got so, brands, I've got brands who are calling people within half an hour of inquiring. Yeah, so no, when we, we do a particular good. campaign for people, I, I think best practice now is brands, they're straight in there, they're calling yeah. people because think about the person sitting on the other end of the computer right now who's just putting their details, interest in their brand. They've basically put in, I'm interested in investing $300,000. Yes. That, that's probably <laughs> worth a call pretty quickly. Well, yes, yeah, um, it's, it's probably one of the biggest. Or some form of contact. Yeah, they've got to get some form of contact pretty immediately. Yeah, yep. something. Um, something that impresses and shows polish. So, but at the same time, I think that people are more demanding because people want it now. Yes. At no time ever that I can see from a marketing perspective are there, are there that many instant automation tools that can give you the ability to immediately give someone a response like that that is yep. incredibly impressive so you could send them PDF packs, you know, your yeah, favourite, yeah. um, or video or some interesting content, video with um, successful franchisees or whatever it is, yeah. you can really set up a funnel. And, and I think you've got, to, you've got to also have a system where you nurture the people along too, because we, we have a process in our business where there's two, obviously there's, well in my business, there's two types of marketing, obviously there's the active lead gen and then there's the nurturing. Mm -hmm. So when you, you're active lead gen, you get the inquiries in, but they might not be ready to buy right now. Mm -hmm. um, they might, by the circumstances might not be perfect, but how do you nurture them? you know, going forward. How do you keep in touch with them? And you don't want to manually do that all the time, obviously. No, no, you want to have a process for that. And uh, because, you know, history tells me that people come back. Mm. So they might not come back for a year, sometimes even longer, 
but they they still if they want to buy a business they uh, I hear this comment, oh, they're all Thai kickers. I actually don't believe someone sits there and says, oh, I'm just going to make an inquiry about all these businesses. No, it's, it's, not, it's not fun. No, it's not it's fun. It's not fun to inquire to a, a, a franchising type website and then have people call you all the time and email yeah. you. And that's so not enjoyable. They're obviously thinking about it, aren't they? Yeah. And, and I think if they're thinking about it, they're going to buy a business at some stage in the future, most likely. So they're going to buy from a franchisor that they feel most connected to and they trust. So, so with the future in mind, what, what do you think the future looks like broadly um, in franchising? Uh, I think it'll be I think it'll be tight. I think good quality franchisors will still continue to grow. Mm -hmm. They'll have good systems as long as they engage their buyers um, really well and, and build that trust and confidence. They'll continue to grow. Uh, franchisors that are sort of stuck in the past, they they probably will be stuck in the past. They probably won't grow that much. Yeah, so. I, I see a number of brands just spinning their wheels out there. Just spinning and spinning. Yeah, and there's a lot of a lot of people that I speak to in franchise and haven't sold a franchise for over a year or more. Um, and I guess a lot of a lot of their plans in the franchisors would be to sell multiple franchises a year, so to not sell any, and ha and to have zero growth. Well, it doesn't really inspire confidence for your current franchisees either. So you've got to have a system to grow your franchise network, and and I think you need to. In I guess you, you probably know more about this than me, but there is a reluctance to invest in that yeah. development. Well, that's so. obviously that's um you know it benefits my business and everything like that however though what i have noticed is that budgets for investing in marketing for attracting quality franchise um, prospects has yeah. has really dropped significantly and whereas we might have brands investing in our business for example 15 to 20 to 25 thirty thousand dollars annually whatever though those many sort of brands are pulling back to the saying you know we've only got five or ten this year whatever it is and we're creating content around that's because that. so, they're not growing i guess and, yeah the budget pressures are at all ends yeah um budget pressures are at all ends but that doesn't solve the problem it actually just makes the problem worse well yeah it's, i think it's there's the old age old saying that when your business tightens up you cut your marketing then you're in the death spiral yeah so once you cut your marketing you're not going to grow but I guess the franchise all that's going to grow will will embrace what's happening now with way, the way buyers are finding information, and you know the buyers may not be looking around on business for sale websites anymore. If they like you, they'll find you. If they're looking around, they'll they'll want they'll be craving content. They'll be craving information because yeah. they actually don't want to talk to you until they're they don't want until you to ready. ring me. Yeah, no, they don't want no. you to ring me until they're ready to to talk. Yeah, and and that's what we've noticed is that we've noticed that the the listing directory style classified type websites have significantly dropped as from um, in lead generation performance with prospects and people going to them. Because yeah. I think people want more. They want they more want information more. before they're just going to put it rather than, hey, we've got this thing for sale in this location, put in your details. Yeah, yeah. And I think um, if they it do... It doesn't cut it anymore. Well, I think if they come to you, then you know you've got a pretty serious... Yes, yeah, I agree. ...contact then. Yep. So, but the numbers are less. The sure. numbers are less, but they're going to be more high quality. Mm. And in the end, I'd rather, you know, one high quality lead than 10 mm. average leads. I think those classified sites... Um, but I think that's happening globally with, with online and going very much content focused. Those classified sites still have a role to play in the marketing mix for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that they don't think. We've dropped all of those totally off our platform, for example. We don't yeah. have any listings at all for sale but because um, we're more content-based platform. But they certainly have a role to play, but the reliance and the performance of those things has dropped significantly from what I can see with other clients we've been working with. Yeah, and you might actually be marketing out to people to feed them into you know, a pre-sale sort mm. of process. So before you even to fill them, your funnel, yeah. yeah, yeah, you might you might actually direct them into a group of content-based um, activities rather than ringing them straight away. Because in general, you know, a lot of buyers they'd be scared to talk for you to talk to them right now. They're trying to make their mind up and they're developing a trust in your business. So how do you do that before you actually talk to them? That's that would be a good question for a franchise to be asking right now too. So if I was um as we wrap this up, if I was a buyer, what would you be telling me right now? Um, do your homework. I, I think you've got to make sure you do your homework. If you're buying a franchise, talk to other franchisees. It's just that the same things have, have been the same, you know. So, you know, you'll be obviously getting some good advice from your from your advisors. Um, and I'd say the time is to buy. Like, you know, I know that... Opportunity's there. Opportunity's there. And, mm. and it, you know, you only have to look at what's happening in the marketplace. Money's probably never been as cheap as, it ever, as it's ever been. Um, yep. So your cost of buying a business from a finance point of view is low. Um, and I think you're going to buy at the right price right now. Excellent. And if I was um, if I was an individual person selling my franchise, what would you be telling me right now? Um, I'd say you've got to get used to the fact that your offers are going to be low. So you're going to you're going to get a lower offer compared so to prepare by, yourself. Yep. Yeah, prepare yourself for it. Do you really need to sell right now? It would be a good way to sort of talk about it. And if you really do need to sell right now, well, then be prepared to accept probably a lower offer than what you'd expect. 
So you'd be thinking almost that maybe renew that franchise agreement and roll on again if you're able to? Yeah, if you're able to. And if it certainly suits you, it's like it's, if you were a seller right now, it's definitely not the best time to be selling right now. Um, you know, it's definitely the right time to buy. And I, and I guess um, as a seller, you just got to be prepared for that. Mm. Um, and if this, the big one, if I was a franchisor, or what would you be telling me? Or what do you tell franchisors right now about the current market for buyers and sellers of franchises um, and what to do? What to do? Um, build trust. So work with your work with your um, processes to build trust, build systems that engage um, buyers before they even talk to you. So so engage buyers before they even actually ring up, pick up the phone to talk to you. Um, show them why they should choose you. So that's that's a million dollar question. The reason why is is it, isn't it? That's everything. Show them why they should choose you. And and I guess the one of the questions I ask. Because like we were saying, every franchise all says, I've got the best, I'm the best, I'm the best. Mm. So does he, so does he, so does he, so does he. They all say it. So, but why? So Mm. I I usually sit down with franchise all and go, so why would I choose you? Mm. And if if you don't have a bang answer on that and you can't show me why, well, you're already losing trust. And I guess it's such a, you know, the good franchise all will take all of those buyers because they'll be the ones out there building trust and, you know, showing people why they should buy their franchise. And if you're not doing that, well, you're going to get left behind. Len Ferguson, broker extraordinaire, thanks again for joining us. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to franchisebuyer.com.au where you'll get alerts of all sorts of stuff we've got happening with Franchise Buyer. I look forward to seeing you on the next one very soon.